good afternoon, everybody. The good news is a computer finally started to work. I was able to get the camera to actually work this time without complications. So uh, I always, whenever they update something in the computers, I always have problems. Got that resolved. Uh, today's mass is being offered for a special intention. So uh, uh, do remember in, in your prayers, uh, we believe in things visible and invisible. We also believe God knows uh, the intentions as long as we come together as the body of Christ to, to pray for one another. So we begin with the entrance antiphon today in your uh, Word Among Us or your uh, Living with Christ or the uh, Friday of the 10th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, whom shall I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings at the mountain of God, Horeb. Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter the word of God came to him. Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and the Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering of sound. And when he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the children of Israel, forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to, to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take, through the, uh, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of, er of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jeshu, son of Nemshi, the king of Israel, and Elisha, son of uh, Safarat, of uh, Abel Mehelel as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks. You, are, uh, you my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Shine like light in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, who, uh, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. As if you, uh, and if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. And it was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. I always find it quite amusing in the 21st century, especially when uh, many of you uh, remember it in the uh, 70s and 80s uh, during the big abortion uh, debate. Who is the church to be able to tell people what to do in their bedroom? And of course, I want you to always remember that if you hear this, this nonsense, because it is really nonsense, to remember Matthew 5. Because who is the church to tell us what to do in our bedrooms? Jesus. Jesus himself told us very clearly there is supposed to be a way that we're supposed to live as Christians. And of course, this is reiterated in the Acts of the Apostles when uh, at the Council of Jerusalem, uh, the first council of the church, when it also would go and tell the uh, Gentiles, do not get involved in unlawful marriages. In other words, we had to live a certain way of life and, and to demonstrate that to the world. And of course, this really brings me to another point that I want to have you kind of think about as we are uh, coming to the end of, of uh, a season for the church. It really ends with uh, this coming Sunday when we meditate upon the mysteries of Corpus Christi. But it's very appropriate for what is going on in the world today. And of course, what we have here is Elijah who has been told by God, you know, I want you to go and start looking for me, listening for me. And of course, we dem he is able to demonstrate us in today's reading how God interacts with the world. Look at what is going on in the world and ask yourself, where is the spirit? What spirit is driving this world? Here we have a coronavirus and everybody is up and uh, anxious and concerned. The whole world is uh, topped over because of what is going on in, in this uh, evil, this physical that evil that is affecting our world. Is the Lord in that? Do we find the Lord in that? No. What we find is with upheaval, God really isn't present there in, in evils, but, but rather he demonstrates us in, in a different way. And of course, then we see what's going on with uh, the rioting that is going on and the evil that we do to one another as brothers and sisters. Uh, evil of, of a policeman who went too far, clearly too far in apprehending a, a victim. But at the same time, the one individual who was being arrested was doing what? passing a phony $20 bill. We kind of forget about that part of it, don't we? It's like we, we forget that there's a reason why the policeman came, but we'll put that one aside too. Is God present in this evil? And the answer is no, no. All this chaos, all this chaos. And then of course the rioting. Is God present in all this rioting? No, no. But how does Elijah find God? What you have to do when God talks in a whisper is put your ears out there to really listen for it, to figure out what God is saying to us. And that's what we have to remember as Catholics and as Christians today. Are we listening for the whisper? Are we listening for God who is speaking to us above all the, the, the noises of this world? Finally, remember, the devil is the one, really, when it comes right down to it, that has the brass band. God doesn't use brass bands. 
the devil does, because he wants us to distract us from the whisper. He wants us not to hear the whisper. And of course, this is a really a good summary of why we are probably lacking in vocations to priesthood and religious life. There's just too much noise in this world. What we have to do is start forcing ourselves. And maybe that's what is good about this coronavirus. Maybe this is what is good about uh, the uh, riots that we're seeing, all the noise, and that we, by our nature, like Elijah, sits there and says, God isn't in this. I need to set that aside and listen for God acting in my life. Now, for some practical things to demonstrate my point, go home, if you will, if you have Netflix, and go ahead and try to find Oh God. It's the movie series Oh God. And of course, it is with George Burns. The very first one was from Mike Den I mean, John Denver was in the first movie of Oh God. But I really do recommend it. It's a three movie series. And it's good comedy, but at the same time, a very interesting message that is being taught. And it goes to what we're talking about right now, how God uses us in, in our ordinary lives to be a prophet out into the world and how the world is usually set on its ear when God speaks. And let's admit it. Can you think of anybody else who is better than God than to play the character of God than George Burns himself? And he does a very, very good job. And if you do want to have a chuckle, uh, a, a time of entertainment, and also an opportunity to discuss what the what is being said in the movie, what better way can you do it than to be at home with family, with yourselves, and to watch something that is quite profound, but at the same time, uh, quite moving, it's quite a spiritually a moving movie as well, for those that are listening. Now let us join together in common prayer as we look to God and ask him to be with us, to walk with us, especially during this time of confusion and, uh, and difficulties, but knowing that God is always whispering for us. He's always calling out to us. We just have to set aside this world to look at the real message of God in our lives. So with that in mind, we now turn to him with our petitions, our supplications, but especially our thanksgiving. So Heavenly Father, we do pray for the prophets of our 21st century. We pray for the leaders of our church. Send your Holy Spirit upon the church that it may be guided by your Holy Spirit that we may come about of bringing your world here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And Heavenly Father, we also pray for our world leaders, those who have, who have taken upon themselves the responsibility of of watching out for, for the people that they govern. May they be of, uh, always modeling themselves after Jesus Christ, the servant of the servants. May they serve the common good uh, well and according to your will. We pray to the Lord. And now, Heavenly Father, we turn to you and present to you all those individuals that are in our community suffering from a, a, a psychological illness, a lot of anxiety, a lot of angst. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to, to bring peace from heaven to hear of us on earth, and that we can live in that peace, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we also pray for all those individuals who are also um, who's, uh, suffering because of, of abuses of, of power. We in particular remember our brothers and sisters in the underground church in China, the underground church in Vietnam, underground church in Korea. We so uh, take advantage of our religious freedoms here in the United States. We're getting those who do suffer because they profess themselves as Christian and Catholic. Heavenly Father, help us in praying for them that we join with them in their suffering and at the same time give them hope in the practicing of our faith here in the United States. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, now we ask you to come to those that that are suffering illness. We in particular do continue to pray for uh, Father Paul and uh, for all those who have been affected by the coronavirus. We pray for all of our, our sick, that they may find healing and quickly so that they can return to your altar of praise with us soon. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Now, Heavenly Father, we commend to you all those who have gone before us, marked with a sign of faith and the hope of Christ's resurrection. May they share the promise of eternal life with you in heaven. We 
we pray to the Lord. And now from that silence, that whisper that we look forward to, we now turn to God from the silence of our hearts, asking him to hear our petitions as we in particular remember a special intention from whom this Mass is being offered. For all of these we pray to the Lord. God our Father, it's such a great privilege to be here with you today to give you worship and praise, nothing of our making but entirely of your own. And in sharing this time with you, we know that we can be made more perfect, more in your image. Hear these petitions that we present to you, therefore, as we trust in you, that you will give us nothing that will keep us from attaining eternal life. In that trust, and in that hope, we present these petitions to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our mediator, who we know lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, is one God forever. And ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining through holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion. So as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the bond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to let us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church fed throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to go heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. Again, if you will turn to your living with Christ or your word among us, let us say together the communion and the bond. If you don't mind, we'll use the second option that you have there. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in him.
Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as I said uh, in the homily, go, go to Netflix, uh, three movies, but the, the last of the series of the uh, Oh God series is Oh God, You Devil. And of course, who would uh, play God better? George Burns. And who would play the devil better? George Burns. Great line in the movie, though, the third uh, the third series there is when the uh, devil uh, when the devil releases the soul that he purchased and God goes to the soul and the uh, soul says well hold it you're the devil and of course uh, God says George Bird says listen the devil likes to look like me talk like me act uh, and, and uh, be, uh, be me but I mean I'll go home and go home to your wife and your child Great, great movie, great line. So uh, I do really encourage you to see if you can, especially during this pandemic, to get a laugh and also learn something quite profound as well. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.